we meet again, and this week we are thinking about forest ecology, or the system of the forest, from the forest floor, where so many plants grow beneath our feet, and animals seen and unseen scurry about. To the understory, above the forest floor, but below the tips of the trees. To the forest canopy, where branches touch sky. Let's begin at our vernal pool, the sit spot where we return each week. Hello, Wild Riders. Welcome back to the side of the Vernal Pool, where this week we are thinking about forest ecology and the forest ecosystem and how different parts of the forest work together and live together. We learned on our field trip this week to Sheldrake that the forest is like a town and within that town, there are different neighborhoods. And within those neighborhoods, there are different smaller homes, just as we have a town we live in a town, in a neighborhood within that town, and a home within that neighborhood. So we are thinking about the forest this week, and I'd like to begin by reading a poem, the first poem from my first book, which is titled Forest Has a Song. And I wrote this because we do live right near the forest, and I love being out here. And I wrote this poem in the voice, voice of the forest. We talked about how you can write in the voice, not yourself. You can write as an animal, you can write as a plant, you can write as an object, or even a whole forest. And although a forest cannot write for itself, as a writer, I can pretend that the forest can and that I am the forest, giving it some human qualities. Um, this poem is titled Invitation. The book was published by Clarion in 2013 and illustrated by a woman named Robin Gorley, an artist named Robin Gorley. So I'd like to share this with you to begin our adventure together this week. The poem is called Invitation. Today I heard a pine cone fall. I smell a spicy breeze. I see forest wildly waving rows of friendly trees. I'm here. Come visit, please. And I feel often like nature does want us to visit. And I know that every time I come out to nature, I visit nature, I sit outside on, on the step outside my house, or I look outside the window or open it up to let some fresh air in, or actually sit in the woods or beside a creek. I know that the forest gives something to me. I know that nature changes me a little bit. And so, and so this week we will think about the forest ecosystem together in our nature journals. Our vernal pool neighborhood is full of water, sticks, and decaying leaves. What animals live in here? As I look at the vernal pool here, I'm wondering if I gently move some of these leaves if I will see a change you can see the water becomes cloudier but is there anybody in there does any creature have a home who might peek out I don't know See the maple leaf there? They decompose. I know there are critters there, but I am clouding up the water. I wrote in my nature journal for a bit, and now that the water has settled, I can see more. I'm gonna zoom in here. I can see some really teeny creatures swimming around there. I don't know what they are, but look how fast they are and look at them go. I might need to look them up when I get back. I'm curious about whether they'll turn into something else or whether they are what they are.
Sometimes nature needs us to wait. Oh, I see new things. Let's talk about what we might write in our nature journals this week as we think about the forest. Hello, kindergarten and first grade writers of Mamaronic. I have been here by this decomposing log, writing on my tummy, um, lying down, looking at what I could notice. And I did my drawing this week along both pages. You can see this log that is turning back into dirt has this part, which is still pretty much looking like a tree limb. And then here where it's all decomposing. And if you've ever found um, a rotting log or a branch, one thing you'll notice is it's not as hard as the wood used to be. It, it is really turning into soil like this. And we have a funny story in our family where one of our children, my husband and I went on a hike and we came home and our child had been playing with a friend and we had brought her a little piece of rotted wood so she could feel how soft it was. And when she felt it, she said, I like playing with rotted wood more than I like playing with that little girl. So we always laugh even now that she's in her 20s. So it's interesting to feel things in nature. And I just in front of you right now brought that little bit of wood even closer to becoming soil. So I drew this here. And then this week I'm focusing on my senses. And I encourage you to do the same. What do I see? What do I feel? What do I hear? Or what not do I taste? And what can I smell maybe? And I did not smell this log, but sometimes there are, although... I could. I could say, it smells like the earth. It smells like the inside of a tree. Right? It smells like the woods. But I didn't do that today. But I could. Thinking of our senses words. What I did is after I drew, and I did see a little tiny something, I think might be a trout lily, but it's so small I couldn't see the colors. And I used those senses phrases to begin each line of a sensory poem. So let me read this to you. I see, I called it now, and usually I title a poem after I write it. Now, I see a rotting log. It has many kinds of brown colors. I hear crunchy leaves. They are dry. I hear chickadees singing. I feel the dead wood. It feels soft. Goodbye, old log. You will be dirt soon. So I have my senses. For the first lines and then the last line something different maybe i'm talking to the object or maybe i could think of a feeling that i have and so i did this again but i thought i'd take a different view i did not go to a new spot but instead of lying on my tummy and looking at this log i lied on my back and i looked up at the sky and i'll show you what i drew Here, I just drew all the tops of the trees I could see against the blue sky. And I will go back and add in the color. I think so this will be a much more beautiful page if I bring my crayons or paints to, or markers or probably not markers. I think they're a little harsh, but maybe colored pencils to the page. And this one, again, I gave it a title afterward. And I'll read it to you on the page and then I'll read it to you again where you can see the sky. I'll take a little video of me lying on my back and letting you see it. But here it is with the drawing. Forest sky party. I feel the earth on my back. I see branches in the sky. I hear wind blowing old leaves. I see brown trees in blue sky. They look like they are having a party. I feel like a guest. So I enjoyed doing this. I'll be doing this more thinking about my senses. And we talked last week about I notice and I wonder, and I absolutely could bring, these are all, all these noticings are from our, my senses, but I could also bring my wonders in. So I could have ended my rotting log poem, goodbye, old log, when will you be soil? Or... Forest Sky Party, you look like you are having a party. 
what dances do you know? Right? So I could ask a question or I could say, how long will you dance? When will you put on your dance, your dance dresses, your leaves? I just read a poem by a girl named Bianca and she talked about how the trees looked like they were wearing dresses because of their leaves. And so I could think of that. I could, like her, I could make a comparison that the leaves are like dresses. That's her comparison, but I might come up with my own. I might say, I can see your arms dancing with the sky. So it's interesting to let our senses lead us into poetry. And I encourage you this week to find a spot, maybe the same spot, maybe a different one, and then draw, quiet yourself down, list your senses. I see, I feel, I taste, no, probably not, I smell, I feel, I hear, I see, and all of the ways that we can take in information and then take these phrases and you can repeat them. I could say, I see, I see, I see. I could have all I see in my poem or I could mix these senses up and so can you. So I encourage you to find a spot, maybe your same one again, maybe your different one and draw and think, take different points of view, lay down, look up, touch something and see where it leads you. It was wonderful, terrible to write with you again and I'll see you soon. You'll see the color on my pages then. Take care. Look up at this blue sky and these great trees with me and let me read to you again. I feel the earth on my back. I see branches in the sky. I hear wind blowing old leaves. I see brown trees in blue sky. They look like they are having a party. I feel like a guest. Our senses can help us write in our nature journals. Try using these phrases to write a poem or your thinking about what you notice in nature. I see, I hear, I smell, I feel, I know. And know that as you do this, you certainly may repeat the same line over and over. Keeping a nature journal is one way to meet and understand the forest. I wish you joy as you explore our natural world, bringing sketches and writings, photographs and paintings, rubbings and facts together on the page. We can write on a carpet of crunchy leaves or beside a burbling creek. With our crayons, we can capture the shadows of branches as they fall on our nature journals. As the trees tower over us, we can ask questions. We might notice little things. We can feel textures and know the earth with our hands and our hearts. As you look out of your windows and spend time outside, think about the living and the non-living parts of nature. If you can, visit a forest and think about how all of the living and non-living things work together, just like a town does. We are all part of nature. The forest always invites us to visit and to explore. The forest invites us to write wild. <laughs>